Hello. In this lesson, we're going to go over the differences between PHP My Admin and Workbench, how to create and update database tables and columns in both PHP My Admin and Workbench. We're going to go over the principles of table design, as well as go over the uses of users and their permissions. We have already went over how to install both PHP My Admin and MySQL Workbench, and later on, we will be demonstrating how to do some basic tasks on both. But for now, let's talk about some of the core distinctions between the two. First of all, MySQL Workbench is a desktop software. This means that it is installed on your local operating system and it can connect from there to different servers. This is helpful if you need to manage databases on multiple servers. PHP My Admin, however, is a web-based tool and is designed to be set up on the server itself. This means that it can be accessed through any browser and is not limited to a particular local device. This is helpful if you often use different devices or have multiple people working on the same server. Also, it's worth noting that PHP My Admin is a bit more streamlined and is often easier to learn for new users. MySQL Workbench, on the other hand, contains some added functionalities like server administration and database modeling which can be very useful when trying to visualize complex data relations. Okay, so now let's get started by showing how to create databases, tables, and columns. We will start with PHP My Admin. Now remember, to open PHP My Admin, just open a browser and type localhost slash PHP My Admin. If this was installed on a server that wasn't on your home machine, you could just put the server's address there instead of localhost. Next, to create a database, we simply go over here to the left and click New. Choose the database name. I want to call it Person. And then choose the collation type. Now, collation is a little bit of a tricky subject for people because there are a lot of options. But basically, collation just sets the language that your data is going to be interpreted in. And most people don't know the language that their data is going to be in because a person's name, if input, could be in German, Spanish, or Chinese. So what we need is a good general way to sort through all of them. Fortunately, we have a good option, and it's what I use for most of my data. It's called UTF-8 MB4 Unicode CI. This uses Unicode formatting in order to sort things so it doesn't care what language it's in. In case insensitive just means it treats capitals and lowercases the same. So let's create our database. Now that we have a database, it's prompting us to create a table. You can set the number of columns and the name right here. Now every person has a name, so our first table we're going to call name. And I'm only going to use three columns for this because we're going to keep it pretty simple. Now click go. And it brings us into where we need to input the information. Remember those data types from earlier? This is where they come in handy. So our first column, I'm going to call it ID. It's always useful to have an ID because that way you can reference it in your other tables. And this ID is going to be very special. It's going to be our primary key. You select that here, primary. Now what this is going to do is it's going to say that this is the key thing that we're going to use to access other data types. So click go. Now as an ID, we're going to want to increment it so that it's always unique. You don't want two IDs to be the same. AI just stands for Auto Increment. Next, every name has two parts. So we're going to call this one First Name and this one Last Name. We could do Middle, but we're just keeping it simple. Next, we're going to change our type. There's no point trying to use an integer to be a name, so we're going to use the var card. Now we have to set how many characters we want to use. A first name is not too likely to be over, say, 15 characters, so I'm going to put that. And the same for the last name. You could increment it if you think it'll be longer, but for now, this is what we'll use. Now, if we wanted, we can set default values. For first name, for example, we could choose, if no one inputs the name, to set the name as John. 
And for the last name, if no one inputs it, it'll say Doe. You could also default it to be null or default it to the current timestamp. Next, notice you could actually set your own collation for each variable, but we're just going to use the one that we set for the whole table. For attributes, it's going to change a little bit depending on your type, but the primary thing for integers is whether or not they're signed or unsigned. By default they're signed, but that allows numbers to be both negative and positive. For an ID we don't really need that, so we're going to choose unsigned. This also allows us to go up to the full number in the int range. If we wanted any of these to be null, we could select to allow them to be null. So let's click save. And now we not only have a database, but we have a table, and that table has three columns, ID, first name, and last name. That shows you how to do it in phpMyAdmin. In the next video, we'll go over how to do the same thing in MySQL Workbench.